Hello fellow orchid lovers. So I realized after my last video, when I was explaining the way that I fertilize orchids, it may have been a little unclear. Um, I gave my reasoning for why I do what I do, but I didn't really clearly delineate exactly what I'm doing. Um, I kind of left a little information out inadvertently. I think I got distracted by this beauty here. This is the second spike on my Cattleya Pegas uh, Firewings Pegasus. Uh, so what I would like to do is just really quickly do an addendum and then I have a few updates for you. So there's actually four different types of water that I use. The first of which is distilled. This I use for new orchids. Any orchid that I get um, gets distilled water for four weeks straight distilled water, no fertilizer. And that's because I want them to acclimate to water culture as I stated in my last video. The next is a bloom fertilizer. So if an orchid has, has been with me for four weeks and it has either blooms or spikes, this is what they get. And this particular one is that bloom fertilizer that I showed you, I take a gallon, a US gallon of distilled water, take two cups out, put two cups of tap water in because I want the orchid to get um, some of the nutrients that's in filtered tap water that might not necessarily be available in just straight fertilizer. And then in addition to those two cups, I put in an eighth of a teaspoon of the bloom fertilizer. And that brings me to a pH of six 0.13 a TDS of 94. That's for orchids in bloom. Then we move over here. This is for orchids. Well, actually it's over here. This is for orchids that are growing that do not have um, spikes or blooms. It's got a higher nitrogen. So again, I start with a bottle of distilled water. I take two cups out, put in two cups of tap water, and then I put in an eighth of a teaspoon of the grow fertilizer. And that comes out with a pH of 6.4, a TDS of 99, and these vary, you know, depending, but minutely. Then this is something that I'm trying. This is for my ICU orchids. They haven't really been growing like I want. They haven't really been getting up until this point, new roots, etc. So there's something called Super Thrive that's on the market. I'm told that this is what some of the bigger orchid growers use to stimulate root growth. So I'm trying it. So what I do is I take, again, a gallon of water, two cups out, put in two cups of my tap water, add the grow fertilizer, and then in addition to that, I put, a, I think it's half of the recommended amount of the Super Thrive. So if you look at the bottle of Super Thrive, it has um, recommended amounts on it for bare root. I put half of that. I think, I'm pretty sure, I should have looked this up before I made a video of what was I thinking. Um, I'll put it in the description when I post the video exactly how much Super Thrive I put in. And that brings us to a lower pH than I really like, and the TDS goes up higher, but I had to try something. Roots were just not growing on my ICU orchids, so I had to try something. So that's um, that's on trial. We're gonna see how that goes. So those are the four different types of water that I use. That is my formula. Like I said, I realized in my last video that perhaps I wasn't as clear with what I use. Sorry, I'm just trying to get these out of the way so we can do a little update here. So I just wanted to show you uh, these four orchids. I have three Phalaenopsis and one Cattleya. These do not currently have spikes or blooms, but there are updates. So let's go with the Cattleya first. Really good growth is happening on her current new growth. Um, she has some eyes that are moving. I think she has a total of four to six eyes that are moving. So she's doing pretty good. She has not sheathed or spiked or anything like that. I got her without any of those. So we're going to keep watching her and see what she does. But like I said in past videos, I 
love seeing new growth and seeing not only new growth but seeing a happy new growth and that it keeps continuing it grows every single week I, I measure it and it's bigger so this orchid is definitely doing okay like I said her roots are starting to die back her new roots are coming out where her new growth is I am just taking the vellum in off of the old roots and leaving them there it does seem to be hydrating the plant like I said this new growth has not stalled so it's doing well and she is developing more eyes so we'll keep an eye on her these two phalaenopsis this one and this one are my two oldest this one's the one I've had for a year this one's the one that I got just before I started water culture coincidentally they have the same color blooms they're white blooms with pink bright pink um, dots on them large dots um, again still no roots however there does seem to be some type of progress with this nubbin it seems like it's ready to do something for me it's finally looking like it's coming out funniest thing in the world well maybe not but to me it's pretty darn funny this is its newest leaf it is continuing to grow look down there another leaf now I can't say that this is the super thrive I did start the super thrive but I've only been doing it uh, for less than a week so I can't say that that leaf is from using the super thrive but this this orchid has no roots and has had no roots for a really long time and it's growing a leaf and now it's decided hey I'm feeling pretty good I'm gonna put out another one unbelievable with no roots so I must be doing something right um, and then this one this is the other phalaenopsis that I've had for a while like I said only has one root but it's putting out a leaf this is also in super thrive because I feel like one roots just not enough what if something happens to that root then this orchid's in trouble so but I mean, hello, little guy. So again, it must be happy. Then this is the Phalaenopsis that lost all its leaves. That leaf is bigger than a day ago, it seems. It is going wild. I know this is growing season for a lot of Phalaenopsis, so that's probably why, but I'm happy because I really thought I was gonna lose this girl. I mean, look at this she lost leaves so quickly I thought it was going in the garbage coincidentally the mini fowl that I have that I wasn't sure about she met her maker last night both of her leaves fell off and her roots were really bad and I said you know what no leaves she can't live so she she I said goodbye to her and I was very sad but that's what happens, right? Uh, so this is my orchid kit. <laughs> um, not this part. That's my kitty kit. Um, I have cats. So <laughs> uh, that's how I take care of some of my cats. They have some issues. They're older. Um, I have a spray bottle of peroxide and I have a spray bottle of alcohol. They are marked, so I know the difference. Cotton swabs, tweezers, Q-tips, clips. And then also my captain's log. I take copious notes because I really want to succeed at this hobby. So I make a note of pretty much anything and everything that happens when it happens. Uh, for instance, if a leaf starts and all of a sudden it seems like it's stalled, if I measure it every week, I can then know, did it stall or is it just growing slower and continuing to grow? If a flower spike starts, I'll know how quickly the flower spike is growing. If a bloom opens, I'll know how long that bloom lasts for the next time. So, you know, just little things um, that I'm noticing, little observations, especially with my new um, experiment with the Super Thrive. I really want to keep a close eye on these orchids and make sure it's not making any adverse reactions. So we'll see. Um, and then over here, I'll just show you very quickly. These are the orchids that are either in spike or in bloom. 
and I'm just going to update you on five of them. I'm not going to do the fowls in the back. Uh, this is my Shari Baby. This is the flower spike here. If you'll remember, it ended about here when I got it. And now it's all the way up here. Last time I measured it, which was a couple of days ago, it was 17 inches. However, it grows every single day. So I'm sure it's probably a little bigger than that. Um, the little, well, they're not little actually. The new growths in the back are doing well. This one's finally getting a little bit of a suitable. This one felt, I felt a suitable almost right away. And then in here, if I can, I don't know if I'm gonna be, can you see that? And I know it's a little blurry. I'm gonna try to focus. That looks like a new growth to me. So that's on an older pseudobulb that has already spiked. And that's where these two new growths came from, that's pseudobulb. So it looks like it's gonna put out a third growth. So I think my Sherry baby is a happy lady. I'm pretty sure. And I know that these plants have, a, have trouble with keeping nice foliage. I don't seem to be having that problem yet. I mean, she does have, you know, some marks on her leaves, but I think that's relatively normal for a Sherry baby. And then a few tips came to me a little bit, eh. But overall, she's a beautiful plant. Um, she seems to be doing really well. I do have to top off her water quite frequently. Usually I'll put it to about here, and then every two days I have to top it off. She's still in distilled water because she's one of my newbies. Not quite four weeks yet. Well, maybe today. I don't know, I have to look at my records. It might be today that she's. I've had her for four weeks. Now this is my Oncidium Saiku Marguerite. This is the one that I found a spike on. And looky there. You can see. Oh, not focusing. Come on. Let me see if I can direct the camera a little bit here. There you go. So now her flower spike is po poking out. It was in there. And she's starting to develop. So I'm excited about that. Again, she is a thirsty, thirsty lady. I will fill this up pretty much every day to about here and it's down to here when I get home at night. So <laughs> she's drinking a lot of water. Uh, this is the other Catlia that I have. This is the Betty Ford York. This is the one with the flower sheath. Um, I do kind of want to show you that she has something in there. The flower sheath that she had developing that I broke the bud off of. Uh, I can't get it to focus. There we go. Um, that, that killed it. I'm going to pan out here for a second and see if I can get a flashlight so I can shine it through so you can see. Yeah, so that, that's a goner. And also my Vanda up in the window. Her flower spike dried out, so that made me really sad. But this girl, there we go. If you look, you see that? And the flashlight just died. Come on. Apparently it doesn't like this angle. There we go. See that? That's a flower spike growing in my sheath. So, man, this flashlight's really on the fritz. But that's her. So I'm pretty excited about that. You could say that for sure. Of course, my Firewings Pegasus is still in bloom. This is the second spike on her. She has four blooms on this spike and she still has another spike back here to come. And this bloom, I don't know if you can see on the bottom, the ruffles are starting to peek out. So she's gonna open any day now. And then my Miltoniopsis, happy. Like I said, I was concerned. I know these are really fussy growers. So I assumed that if she was gonna hate my environment, I would know right away. But so far, so good. All of her blooms are opening. The spike that was really far behind 
everything has plumped up and grown and her buds are opening. So she's, she's, she likes it. She likes my cooler environment. I seem to have found a good spot for her and these blooms are gorgeous. They just make me smile. I know the camera doesn't really pick it up, but they are such a beautiful yellow. They just remind me of a sunset or a sunrise, really. Just beautiful. And they sit right by my coffee maker. So every morning I come out and I make myself a cup of coffee and I say hello to my beautiful blooms. And like I said, she has installed this other spike is continuing to open. So I think, I think we've mastered what she likes. I said mastered, I take that back. <laughs> I don't want to be presumptuous, but I seem to have found a situation she's not displeased with. And also what's really cool is some of these blooms opened upside down. And cause I didn't, they came sp um, spiked, um, but I, took them off of their spikes like they came like this so some of them opened upside down and they turned themselves around it's kind of funny how they did that it's I've never seen an orchid really do that before but they did so that's pretty cool I'm trying to think if there's anything else I wanted to update you with I don't think so um you know my fowls are doing okay they're back there doing their thing blooming and doing well so yeah that's that's my most recent update um i been telling myself and reiterating to myself over and over and over that i don't need more orchids and i shouldn't buy any more orchids well guess what this afternoon i placed my biggest order yet so apparently my pep talks to myself just don't work <laughs> So there will be more orchids to show you in a couple of days. But that's it. If there's anything that I've left out that you guys want to know about or clarification on anything, please do let me know. Otherwise, I will talk to you next time.